Welcome to DTLT Today. I'm Tim Owens and once again I am left all alone in the office. Jim's gone away speaking, Andy's off riding his bike, and Martha doesn't really get to participate in these things uh, because she's not completely 100% dedicated to the cause. Uh, however, you do get the benefit of me and in some ways I feel like I carry the rest of this group so I think it works out okay. Uh, today we're going to be looking a little bit at some very innovative user interfaces. So some interactive experiences that we were finding on the web earlier today. Uh, in particular by one artist and designer, a guy by the name of Brett Victor. And uh, I got my laptop here, I want to show you a few things. Uh, it's mind-blowing stuff because uh, a little bit of the research that he's doing and some things that he's talking about are these ideas of taking these concepts like mathematical equations and formulas and things like that and translating it into the visual world, something that you can see, something that you can press and move and interact with and understand, right? So uh, I found out about him because of a blog post earlier today and I'll link to that where he was uh, particularly criticizing a video that Microsoft put out. And it was a video Microsoft was saying this was the future of innovation and uh, what was going to be coming down the pipe in the next 10, 15, 20 years. And he criticized it because a lot of it was just this, you know, tap here, tap there, move your hands here, minority report style stuff. And he said, you know, that's really not all that innovative. That's, you know, that's what we're doing right now with the iPad, with other touchscreen interfa interfaces. And he said it's not really all that innovative and that there's more to it than, than just using your hands just to press and move and stretch uh, that we interact with our full bodies, with our arms, with our legs, that we grab things, we use precision movements and none of that was taken into account. But anyway, I'm not talking too much about that video. What I want to talk about is some of the other stuff that I found on his website. Um, I've got my laptop here and I'll pull this up. The first thing that I want to show you uh, so here's this website, and I'll pull up my laptop so you can see. And he is at, I can pull, it's uh, worrydream.com, and I'll put this in the show notes. But the guy's name is Brett Victor. He actually used to work for Apple, uh, and he actually worked on the iPad user interface. So if that's not enough of a credential for you, <laughs> I don't know what is. Uh, but this is his website. It's a pretty funky uh, website in terms of how you interact with it. but. You can scroll down and see he's broken it up into things that he's researching and looking into. At the very top is his biography and his resume. Uh, down here uh, are some actual things that he's worked on in the past, his experience, so to speak. And then some things that he's just played around and created, whether they be graphics, uh, whether they be interactive motion things using Flash or something else. So uh, it's all in there. Uh, in particular, uh, the first thing I want to show you is something that he worked with. You may know this guy because he was actually involved with a pretty innovative ebook called Our Choice. It was a book by Al Gore that they translated to the iPad. Um, it was by a company called Push Pop Press, and he was actually working with this company to create this uh, digital ebook that would be unlike anything else. I'm going to play the trailer just so you can get a good idea of what kind of interfaces I'm talking about and talking about thinking about taking things to the next level and understanding things in a visual way. So let me play this and let's see if you can hear it. Human civilization and the Earth's ecological system are colliding. Oh, the climate crisis is the most destructive and threatening manifestation of this collision.
All right, so you get the idea. Pretty crazy stuff. And I mean, this is the kind of thing where when you first see ebooks, you think, oh, I can move from page to page. That's really wild. And then you look at something like that and you're actually grabbing images, pulling them up full screen. They have some interactive elements there where you can actually blow onto the book and it'll move the windmills. And that's how they explain how energy is stored and things like that. Uh, so just really, you know, that gives you a good idea of the kind of stuff that this guy is interested in. And it's really cool stuff. Um, so he's got a project that he's working on right now called Kill Math. And his idea is that he could translate that into the mathematical realm. Uh, and so he's got several different projects that he's working on in terms of how can I make things easier to understand visually. Uh, movements on the screen, translating to formulas and things like that. Uh, the first one, and it's another video that I'll show you, uh, is called a process of interactive exploration of a dynamic system. And that's a whole mouthful just to explain how exactly what I've been saying before. Interacting with something on the screen, understanding what it is. But this vid video will show you better than I could uh, what that actually means. So let's take a look at this. And this one I've actually got on the computer, so it won't even have to load. I'd like to show you a new user interface for exploring dynamical systems. These things show up everywhere in science and engineering. A dynamical system is a set of variables and a set of rules saying how those variables change over time. Those rules are called differential equations. For this demo, I'm going to show you a simple well-known system called the predator-prey problem. In some ecosystem, you have a population of predators and a population of prey. If there are too many predators, they overhunt the prey. Then the predators starve, the prey population grows back again, and you get these cycles. If you look up this problem on Wikipedia, you see this. It takes a lot of effort to decode these equations and figure out what's going on here. And these are just the rules of the system. You can't actually see how the system behaves, which is what you care about. Here's a different way of representing the system. The two variables, number of predators and number of prey, are shown as plots over time. So you immediately see the behavior of the system. You see those cycles I was talking about. If I tap on a variable, it comes up big at the bottom and I can run my finger over it and get the actual numbers. To compare the two variables, I can tap on both of them at the same time, and now I have two overlapping plots at the bottom. On the right is a phase-based plot, which plots predators on the x-axis, prey on the y-axis, and we can see how they both change over time. Notice how the cursor on the phase-based plot follows where my finger is moving on the time plot. A dynamic system can behave completely differently when you start off the variables with different initial values. You'll see there's a little knob next to where the initial predator population is plotted. Moving this knob up and down adjusts the initial population size, and you can see how the system's behavior changes. On the face space plot, there's also a knob at the initial point of the trajectory. All right, we don't have to play all of that. I'll put the link to it in the show notes so that you can watch the whole thing. But it's really compelling stuff, right? It's really interesting uh, how you could, and that's an iPad application that he's working with, that you can move something on the screen and get a visual understanding of these more complex topics. Uh, another project that he does is called the Scrubbing Calculator. So this ties into the same idea where you move something on the screen, th these numbers are tied together in some way. To show you what this works, he was looking at it in terms of that ebook, Our Choice. Uh, and if I go down here and hit play, this will show what it looks like when you've got a mathematical equation that's doing several different things. And what happens if this number went up? What would the rest of the equation do based on that? So if I click to play, you can see. So he types 60 is the top margin, 140 is the bottom margin, uh, plus 8 times 20, gap 9 times 100, bar height. And then there's these numbers. But you can see that he can actually drag these numbers and move them around. And th that number is then tied to that number on the right-hand side. And so by scrubbing across the screen, as they call it, you can get a better understanding of what's happening with the rest of the equation. Another, uh, something that he mentions with this that I didn't realize is an application called Solver by a company called Aqualia. And it's in the Mac App Store right now. And you can play with this same idea where, um, where you've got numbers, but it's different than a spreadsheet, so to speak. Let me try playing this introduction video. It's only 38 seconds long. You get a better idea of what this is. Uh, it's wild stuff. Solver helps you do quick calculations and figure stuff out. 
Just type your problem and Solver shows you the answer. You can compare different what-if scenarios line by line and use words alongside your numbers so that they make sense. Solver is great for adding things up, for easily doing percentages and for converting things like currencies. It's smarter and clearer than a calculator and quicker to use than a spreadsheet. Solver is available for Mac, iPad, and iPhone. So that's the application called Solver. Pretty wild, different idea. It's, you know, essentially you've got those spreadsheet functions and things like that, uh, but they've made it easier to understand how numbers relate to each other and see that happen in a visual way. And so that was a little bit of what he was basing his stuff off of. Uh, if I pull up here, the other thing I want to show you that it's less math related on this one. So this is not something from uh, Brett Victor. This is something completely different, but it's a website where I think they do some really uh, innovative if graphic things. Uh, it, it's hard to understand, uh, so I'll just go over here to the website and show you. This is a website called Gidzy. Uh, I have no idea what they do, but I guess they make a listings of some kind. And so this is a page that describes how to make the perfect listing on their website. But what's really cool is as you scroll down. So we've got a getting started button. And as you can see, there's a nice little animation thing that's happening here. Um, go down to languages and you can see what happens. So uh, different colors for the different sections, but as you scroll down, things start happening. So if I move down here, we've got this blinking cursor that starts typing out that title. Now if I scroll back up, you can see that animation is directly tied to my scroll action. Now if I scroll down here, so then this is about descriptions, these colors start bleeding off into the next section. We've got a very subtle animation in the background of this categories, and I kind of like this one. This one's about the meeting point, and the point comes down from the top here. So it's just a really interesting way that they're using some basic CSS animations and maybe a little bit of JavaScript. Now here's something talking about groups and the people expand as you're scrolling down the screen. Duration is this awesome little sand in the time capsule thing. And these are just basic objects. I'd, you know, one thing that struck me with this website is that even standing on its own, even if there wasn't all this cool animation stuff happening, it's really beautiful design. But you add in these simple elements of animation and the page starts coming together in really cool and interesting ways. So these things are just moving across the screen as I scroll down. If I scroll back up, they move back away. So. For me, it's just a really cool way that you can use simple elements like that to sort of I hate to say it, but it keeps it, it blows my mind in a way. It's it's not stuff that we think to even do, but this stuff exists right now. You have CSS animations, you have JavaScript uh, actions like jQuery, where there's these little plugins that allow you to do specific things, and those things work whether you're on a desktop, a laptop, or a mobile device. And so uh, it's those kind of things that I want to get to explore even more. And I'm really excited by the stuff that Brett Victor is doing. Uh, both on mobile devices, but also on the web. He's got this other thing, and I'll have to show it to you, uh, called Dynamic Pictures. And this is something that he's looking at. I'll pull this up right here. Um, and so this is the idea that he has that one day, it's not pictures that we're going to be looking at in sort of static images. So this top image here is a static image. It doesn't move. This is that traditional JPEG or ping file that you see on the web. And then underneath of it, this is an animation. So your animated GIF or whatever file you're using that's basically just moving across the screen like that. And you've got your traditional animation. But what if you had these several different layers that made up this dynamic image? And so this last image here, you can actually take your mouse, or if I was on a touch screen device, I could move my finger across it. And I can actually move the scene. It's got this parallax action action happening where the front is moving faster than the back, giving it a sense of depth. So this is a more interactive experience. And so he has this idea that eventually, once the tools get there, 
all images are going to be this way, where you're going to have these dynamic images that you can move and that you can adjust and uh, morph. Uh, remember, the best way that I can put it is, remember that idea where uh, we used to use MapQuest and there were those arrows across the top and the left hand and right hand side and bottom and if you needed to move the map around you had to click on the arrow and you had to wait for the map to refresh itself and then I need to go a little bit further to the right you click the arrow and it refreshes itself and then Google Maps came along and all you had to do was drag on that map and it completely moved and it was just like this moment where it was just like that's possible now and it it changed everything and now we've come to get used to that kind of stuff where we almost ignore it and if it's not there we're sort of like are you kidding me like why not so it's that kind of idea where eventually we're going to get to the point where everything's interactive where you can move and touch and uh, interact with these things and it, when they don't happen when you create a website with static content that just sits there and when I do stuff to it nothing happens then it's sort of like oh that's it so I'm excited about this kind of stuff. It's really rocking my world, and it's stuff that I want to play around with more. So if you want to check him out, his website is worrydream.com. Uh, he's got all his projects up there, and the guy's name's Brett Victor. Uh, and then that other website, if you want to take a look at it, is gidsy.com, G-I-D-S-Y.com. And they have a handbook called Making the Perfect Listing. But I'll put all this stuff in the show notes for you. Uh, thanks for watching, and hopefully, hopefully, Tomorrow, Jim Groom will be back. Maybe even Andy Rush, maybe Martha Burtis, but who knows. Uh, until then, I'm holding down the fort. Tim Owens, DTLT Today. Thanks for watching. Thank you.